Okay. Uh, so now, now that we've set up our Super Smash, let's use it. This guy's gonna run over. Whoop, or, whoops. Run over to, not on top of, maybe, uh, the monster here. And we're gonna click Super Smash. So, attack modifier, damage modifier, those would be temporary, but heat one time would be if an attack does multiple damage, uh, damages multiple targets, so area of effect attacks. Um, and let's, we'll just set that to two. Um, and then supplement, uh, you have some supplement ability would do that. And then targeting, none would mean it would just spit out the text. Text box, you're gonna click it from a drop down. Include allies, so we'll include allies in this. Uh, just to... so, um, oh, we're gonna that this guy attacks the monster and the player character. Okay. Uh, whoops, I dropped uh, my thing down here, so you can see Super Smash. Hopefully, uh, and so I've hit the rolled eight versus AC, rolled seven versus AC telling me uh, in a pop-up here which you may or may not be able to see how it did that and it's telling me how it rolled the damage as well and if I click on that green super smash and I go up here to my description window it tells me how that does that and it has all that fun flavor text in it so that is how you set up powers uh, let's go um, let's just uh, we're gonna do I have a warlock set up here so we're gonna use uh, power with a supplement just for th this particular case uh, so we're going to do an Eldritch Blast supplement with Warlock's Curse. Uh, and, and so you'll see it roll there. So it does the uh, first the Eldritch Blast, and then it applies the bonus damage on top of that. So that's how supplements work. And let's go start recording. Going over, uh, now that we've gone over setting up powers, uh, I'm just going to cover a couple other quick things. You'll notice that uh, our Super Smash is in green uh, because it's an at-will power. Um, for example, Second Wind, which all characters have, that's an encounter power, so it's set to red. And if I click on that, um, it uh, you'll see that it actually turns the button white to let me know that I've used that ability. Similarly, this Hallowed Circle ability, it's a daily power. Um, so it affects multiple targets. Uh, we'll set somebody else up here. Um, and so it's doing damage. You know, ideally we wouldn't want to attack our own guys there. Um, and it's time of that. And again, if I want to know more about Hallowed Circle, uh, I can click on it and it'll tell me that. Um, so beyond that, uh, beyond powers, you have combat rolls. Um, and the way combat uh, rolls buttons are pretty straightforward, so uh, we've set up initiative here for our, our guys here on this one side. Um, but let's say we didn't have initiative in this case, so I'm going to remove all from the initiative. And uh, what I'm going to do is select everybody. I'm going to click roll initiative. Uh, I'm just going to click, it's asking me uh, in the pop up. Uh, to add a modifier um, so and then once I'm over here I'll see it's got all of these initiatives kind of next to it so what I'm gonna do is go to next click sort and that'll then uh, set up initiative in the right order so that I know who attacks first who attacks second etc um, so let's go back to awesome sauce here so let's say it had just been his turn um, so we'll go next uh, so there's a green check mark next to Awesome Sauce indicating it's his turn. Um, at the end of your, if he had made an ability check during his turn, it would uh, use the ability here. Click OK. Uh, for monsters, there's an option to set this private skill check. Um, if for a skill check, if it been some sort of bonus, pick from the appropriate scale. Click OK. Um, and then finally saving throws so um, saving throws can either be against uh, an effect or save uh, so here you can see the effect or a death save um, I'm not sure if you can actually see the pop-up oh here we go now you should see the pop-up uh, effects like not on your character sheet or you can do death save 
Uh, so let's back out a moment, and we're going to actually go to our character here. And um, before we do the saving throw, this is a good time to introduce combat status. So, as I said before, uh, the framework does not automatically record changes in states. You need to manually either add hit points uh, through the through the this add hit points window, uh, and we'll just cancel out that. Uh, minus the minus hit points window, you just put in that you took, uh, which you should be kneeling, using now. For some reason, you also lost a healing search. You could do that. Uh, so we're going to click kill, and then we're, we're going to go back to awesome sauce here. Um, and you'll see, uh, in addition to that, it's got uh, three other buttons, my states, target states, and notes. So my states is, uh, you can't see it because it's a drop-down box, and the, but there's a whole bunch of buttons clicked. So in this case, we're going to say he is in my and you'll see here there's a little uh, lockdown symbol, if I, especially if I zoom in. Uh, you can see the little lockdown symbol on him. Um, so what we're going to do, let's say if it's the end of his turn, he can go and do a saving throw. Uh, and then we're going to click against We'll say it's a modifier of 1, mostly because it'll hopefully force the box into the recording here. Uh, and click OK, uh, and so he rolled a 15, and you'll notice that now that the icon is no longer on the character. Uh, the other type of saving throw common in 4th edition D&D, obviously, is the death save. So we're going to set our modifier to 0 here, and then we're going to say it's a death. Um, so in this case, he rolled a 12, so he made his death save. Uh, we're going to keep rolling, though. So... Death save, he failed one. Uh, so, you can see if I mouse over him and he's got one little skull, because he missed one death save. Uh, come on. We'll, and we'll try, keep trying to kill him here. Uh, so let's say we he did roll three death saves. Uh, well, actually, I want to do it just so you can see it. Uh, so he failed a second death save there. Made his death save. And there he failed his death save. You be dead! And puts a big red thing on this. Um, you know, the GM can always, you know, obviously intervene. Um, so, the let's, uh, for the time being, we're going to take an extended rest just to reset him. Um, now you'll notice uh, there's APs and dailies already in here as well. Um, those are, can be handled by the spend in AP, spend it daily button that opens a pop-up which won't be in the recording. So custom code, uh, custom code allows you to implement some extra damage abilities. Uh, has target won't allow you to select a custom target. So if you have an attack that say attacks this plus allows a character to another player character to use a healing surge plus 1d6 damage that will then allow you to specify that player and it just cleans things up a little bit uh, and then finally if it's a supplement uh, this will allow you to uh, use it as a supplement to other attacks and I'm going to show you a warlock's curse which allows you to do that uh, later AP it'll tell me how many I have left Spend a daily magic use, so I use magic item. I can only use one since he's level five. Uh, and so that's most of the combat status features. Uh, the uh, we'll go over in the next recording uh, weapons and lights. Um, uh, gain a milestone is something GMs can use just to add back uh, some things. Um, so I'm gonna end recording here and then go. Actually, well, as long as we're current, let's do weapons and implements. Uh, so typically, it'll open up a, a pop-up box. Uh, you're going to click Edit Weapons and Implements. So we can uh, select, I just want to replicate it. So let's say we want to make a uh, Add New Weapon. There's an option for that. Add, click Add New Weapon. That opens the name here. 